there's this enormous amount of stuff being developed and created as kids get into that. And um, in New Zealand, at least, uh, as I'm finding, very little thought's been given really to what's going to happen to that in the long term. Who owns it? Who can share it? You talked about mashups and, and that sort of thing. And so the idea of developing a creative commons policy within a school has become of intense interest to some. So I'm interested to hear your thoughts on, um, A, what the benefits of doing a Creative Commons approach might be, and then B, what some of the practical steps you would suggest schools might take to introduce that. Well, I think the benefit, the clear benefit, is that it sets up simple, clear understandings about uh, who is entitled to what with respect yeah. to the work that's created. Um, and, you know, there can be different policies. You could have a policy that says basically everything that's created is free for anybody to use, or you could say everything's created is free for non-commercial use for everybody to use. But regardless of what the policy is, if you, uh, you have a clear statement, it makes it easy to understand what should be happening to this material. But I think the second part of it, which is often missed, um, but I think is a, is a very important part of this discussion, is you don't want school districts to take a, uh, turn a blind eye to the question of who owns what. Um, so when you have kids and you tell them, go out and do some report about World War II and, and gather as many images as you can about World War II and put it together in a video where you narrate, um, uh, if, if you just say, go to the web and do this, these kids are going to be taking lots of material which is presumptively uh, under copyright and yeah. for which there is no permission to use that material. And um, instead, if schools have a clear Creative Commons policy, um, you could begin to educate the students about the need to go use material which is authorized for this kind of use. And there's an enormous amount of it. Um, now, I do think companies like Google and Microsoft need to do a better job in making it easy for people to obey the law. So mm -hmm. you go to the Google image search page mm -hmm. and you type in, you know, uh, um, uh, fighter jet and up comes you know 10,000 images of fighter jets uh, and to the left you've got all these different ways to filter the images including you know filter it on the basis of the hue of the image you know to a yellow images of fighter jets yeah. or something yeah. like that but it's astonishing that there is no way to filter on the basis of reuse like which of these images am I already licensed to reuse right and if you could just click that and then see the subset of these images which you could legally reuse that could make it very easy for teachers to say you need to use CC licensed materials only or materials that have been authorized for reuse and here's the way to do it so I think if we get more schools to adopt clear policies that would put more pressure on businesses like Google and Microsoft to do the right thing, um, which is to encourage people, uh, give people a simple way to obey the law so that more people will obey the law. So in a, in a nutshell, what, what sorts of things ought to be in a school policy? I think one very important question is who owns the stuff that's produced? Yeah. Like who owns in the sense who also is allowed to use it? Um, and that could be policies that say, you know, it's all owned by the student or the student gives everybody a... Uh, right to use it for non-commercial purposes or anything like that. Um, but the second thing is, what are the rules that govern the material that goes into the, the stuff that's being produced for a school? Now, um, uh, in the American context, you could say a lot of that would be governed by fair use, and that's a very hard concept to yeah, make explicit. Yeah. Um, but you could complement the fair use with very clear requirements around Creative Commons licensed material. So if you say, um, you know, you can, we're going to say that material you produce must be material that has the proper authorization to be produced. Um, so that means music that has the right uh, license and and uh, images with the right license and and uh, and. Um, other material that you can clearly claim fair use for, that would begin to create a recognition in the students of the difference between the stuff they're allowed to use without any question and stuff they need to ask permission for. Um, and that is part of the education. And, you know, nobody, or at least I certainly don't want a world where there's no copyright. And I think the fact of copyright means there are certain things you can't use without getting permission. But we've got to make it easy to distinguish between those things and the things which the author really wants people to use freely, and that's what the CC licensed uh, okay. material is for. And so in practical steps of a school goes down that track and so forth, is it then simply a case of students attaching a Creative Commons kind of seal somehow or incorporating it in the tag associated with that item. Is that, is that what we're looking it's at? It's partly that. Um, it's also that in, pro in, in classes where the projects include creating material that's being, you know, ripped from the net and put into, the, put into a report, that there's some 
um, accounting, you know, some some claim at least that the material is is you know licensed uh, for this right. kind of use. Um, uh, so the teachers begin to say to kids, you know, think about this difference. Um, uh, as a way to respect the underlying copyright and the author's desire about how the material should be used. And are, are there any, uh, anything, any strategies in particular, or anything that schools need to be thinking about in terms of the monitoring of that? Um, you know, are, there, are there some practical ideas from your experience that, that school leaders, teachers ought to be thinking about uh, to ensure that that policy is adhered to? Well, I think some level of monitoring <coughs> might be necessary, but I think, you know, We've got to resist the idea of like a perfect technology for monitoring and controlling all use. Um, what we need to do instead is to just make it easy to obey the rules. Um, and if you make it easy to obey the rules, you make the rules simple and clear, and you have an infrastructure where people can actually um, uh, follow those rules, then the vast majority of cases, um, there's no need to monitor. Thank um, you, and, uh, and where there is a clear problem, then, then that, will, uh, that will be more uh, visible.